Okay, so my last video got cut off and I was talking about the dietitian. Um, now, the dietitian visit was straightforward. It was all about portion control and, you know, mindful eating. Make sure that you're not sitting in front of a TV snacking and not thinking about it or grazing because that's when a lot of people get into trouble. You don't realize how many calories you're putting into your mouth because you, you're not thinking about it. Um, and that's something that has to be worked on, that I have to work on because uh, I'm guilty for that. I've worked in a lot of kitchens and when you work in a kitchen and you're working for eight hours and you're working around food, sometimes grazing happens and you don't even realize you're doing it. So, um, and, and she also mentioned to me about, you know, having my, my I did a three day journal for her for a regular two weekdays and a weekend that that for a food journal and um, my biggest issue is not having a more balanced diet like I'm still eating really well like I said in my in my previous videos I've lost seven pounds just changing um, a little bit here and there but I don't think about you know when I'm having breakfast, for example, if I have oatmeal, I should also have like a fruit or something to add um, fruits and vegetables, your greens to your, to, like if you're having um, tuna and salad, you should add more greens to that because half of your plate, the way they showed it is the plate is about this big. Half of it is greens, and the other two quarters is your protein and your starch. So, um, I don't have a picture of that, but I'm sure that you can look it up on, on some of the websites. Um, she also had on the, I was talking about the steps that you get between, um, at, at the hospital after surgery to going home. And it says here at the bottom, um, bring a timer and a sheet of paper on the day of surgery so that you can time the 15 minutes between when you're supposed to have your, uh, your little medicine cup full of fluids so that you're keeping track. Because when you go home for the first little while, you're going to have to keep track to, on your own. So... I'm also going to, in this video, do the um, therapist appointment. It's not going to be, because I'm not going to talk to you about everything I talked to her about that's personal. But she did give me some information. Like there are, in Ontario, there's support groups, and they give you uh, like a, a thing, a registry thing of all the different support groups that you can find online to, you know, help you through the transition from being who you are now to who you're going to be after surgery, um, you know, support with, uh, with emotional times of what you can do instead of eating, you can find something else to do. Um, they've also got websites. She gave me a bunch of websites that you can, you can go on and become like a member, like the obesity help forum of Ontario. Uh, Laptop lunches is a manage your portion size and get fresh ideas on how to put together a lunch. So if you're working and you bring your own lunches, how to make sure your lunch is balanced and well, you have a lot of nutrients, right? Um, and then she gave me a list of things that you can do instead of mindful eating. This is from a therapist now. Um, and it's got a list here about t tips uh, to assess your hunger cues. How hungry are you? Engage in self-talk. Focus on feeling not feelings, not judgments. Am I not hungry? I am just feeling stressed, happy, sad, bored, excited, anxious, tired, or depressed. Eat at the table. Avoid distractions while eating. TV, computer, work. Look at your food. What are you eating? Is, is it something that you your body needs or something that your mind needs? Um, eat slowly. 
chew your food. Make sure you chew it too much before it goes all the way down. That way you give your stomach time to realize it's full. Put your fork down in between bites. Don't sit there and just keep shoveling it in. Have a bite, chew it, relax, go for your next bite. Assess your feelings of comfort, comfortable fullness. So um, don't stuff yourself till you're like, oh, I gotta undo my pants or whatever. Like, eat until you're satisfied, but not over full. Set up a support system. So talk to your family, talk to your friends, tell them, I have to watch what I'm eating. I can't, I can't eat like I used to anymore. You don't have to limit yourself. You can eat still regular foods but and, and good food. And, and you can still go out with your friends, but you have to know your limits. And these are a lot of things that uh, she gave me a list of things that you can do instead of eating because you're bored or because you're just sitting around the house. Uh, a scrapbooking card, making crafts, puzzles, Legos, poetry, knitting, crocheting, sewing, things that you can do with your hands to keep your mind occupied and off of food. Um, and there's like two lists, two rows of lists here. Uh, I'm not going to go through them all, but it's a, it, it's basically about being sensible and paying attention to what you're, what you're doing, not just doing it because it's what you've always done. And that's the whole point of the surgery, right? Is to make sure that your life changes. And in order for your life to change, you have to change. So, you know. And we talked about uh, your, uh, my relationship with food. And how in my family, because we're Irish and, and Native, and we celebrate things with food. Our family, whenever there's a birth or a death, everybody gets together and eats. And it's, it's just the, the tradition on my mother's side. I, I was raised by my mom, and so I spent a lot of time with my Irish side of the family. And um, it's just what we did. Every, every family event, we, was, there was food. Every holiday, there was food. And people were, like, just shoveling it in. And, you know, the women in my family, we gain weight. We're short in stature, stature, and we gain weight around the stomach and around our faces, and it's just the way it is. Um, and that's the worst kind of weight you can gain because the stomach fat is is actually intertwined and, and infecting your internal organs. So it's part of the reason why we end up with the diabetes and, and the high cholesterol and high blood pressure in my family. Diabetes runs in the family, heart disease runs in the family, cancer runs in the family. And I made a conscious decision to fight against that, to make sure that even though it runs in my family, I don't have to succumb just because everybody else in the family has diabetes or everybody else in the house in the family. It's just a thing. Like in my family, it's just they accept it and they move on. Uh, my grandmother, my great grandmother, lost both her legs to diabetes, which I said in the previous video. But I'm not going to. It's just, it's just how it is, and I know, like I know, like I know that this is the way I'm doing it, and this is how it's going to be. And when I'm determined to do something, it gets done. So, you know, so this brings me to the price list, and I mentioned this in the first videos. Um, there are things out of pocket that aren't covered by OHIP, and unless you have a really good um, drug plan, some of this may be covered partially, but not, not all of it. Like the OptiFast is out of pocket. It's not covered at all. Um, it's between two to $400. You get two to four weeks, maybe. It depends on your size, and it depends on your doctor. Um, the Prevacid is $80 a month for six months, so it goes up to four hundred and eighty dollars. Um, the Prevacid can be covered by OHIP, Ontario Drug Benefit Coverage Program. The LU code is four hundred one. That's what's here on this paper. Uh, the Tanzaprin HRH patients may be covered by private insurance, but they okay. So. My tablet is is starting to get full, so I'm just going to move on. The multivitamins, 
scale and measuring tools, hotel, if you if you were coming from out of town and you need to stay, somebody in, is coming with you and they need to stay in a hotel, and parking at Combo River Hospital, like, each half hour is $3.75, day passes from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. is $15, um, etc. Like, there's a lot of out-of-pocket stuff for the... 10 zappering costs, depending on your rate, between $89 and $260. So, you should check into this stuff before you decide whether or not you're going to go through with the surgery um, and budget for it if you don't have a, uh, a really good drug plan or financial, you know, if you're not financially secure with it. But other than that, um, most of it is your health and your blood work and stuff. If they find something in your blood work, like with me, I have to up my B12 and my, my vitamins, like my minerals and vitamins, and then do my blood work again before my surgery will, will go on. So that is all the information I got from Humber Hospital, and I will let you know when I see the... Uh, when I do my blood work again, and when I see the uh, um, medical internist, where I'm going from there, and hopefully this information will help you, and help you make a decision whether or not the surgery is right for you. Uh, I will be doing before and after pictures before the surgery, and uh, probably I won't put them up for a while, but like before surgery and after surgery, I'll put them up eventually. So. Stay tuned, everybody, and uh, subscribe and comment if you want anything answered that I could probably find answers for. Um, just leave me your comments, and I'll do my best, okay? Have a good day.